Ghostbuster. We are heading to the crypt. We got a call. Ghostbusters! Sirs and madams, boy, are you in for a roller ghoster of a ride with your two favorite ghost hunters, Dothead Dead and Cuban Toast McGhost? On today's episode of Do You Wish to Be Remembered? We visit the crypt below the St. Paul's Cathedral in London, one of the most iconic landmarks in London and where some of the bravest and brightest minds are laid to rest, such as Ethier the Run Ready, Sir Christopher Wren, Horatio Nelson, Joseph Turner, and more. Who in the heck would name that kid Ethier the Run Ready? Probably someone who was incompetent. All right, I did good. So grab your Bloody Mary drink. Say Candyman three times while looking in the mirror and call in sick from your graveyard shift and don't forget to charge up your proton packs because we are some really good Who is this? This is um And there's uh, Maybe you speak Latin? You speak Latin? Navis, Navis, Solitaire, Feliz Navidad. Look at his face. Is it soft? Yo, this guy has some thick ass eyebrows. Uh, obviously, because they are eternal sleep. The Mary and Child Sculpture by Josefina de Vesconcellos is a notable piece located in the crypt of St. Paul's Cathedral. This sculpture was given to St. Paul's Cathedral in 1955 and cast in terracotta and is the only sculpture by a woman in St. Paul's. What do you think they do here? The OBE Chapel, also known as St. Faith's Chapel, was originally a parish church attached to the old cathedral destroyed in the Great Fire of London. In 1960, this chapel became the spiritual home of the Order of the British Empire, or OBE, an honor created by King George V in 1917 to recognize a considerable civilian contribution to World War I. Really? This chapel is also known as St. Martin's Chapel. It is paneled with English oak and contains two elegant cases with registers featuring the names of all knights bachelor from 1257 to date. This is the tomb. Where's the under? Which one? Oh, really? I mean, who's underneath this one? Sir John Everett? No. That one says Wren too. The tomb of Sir Christopher Wren, the architect of St. Paul's, is marked by a simple stone and is surrounded by memorials to his family, to his collaborator Robert Hooke, and to the Masons and other colleagues. The Latin epitaph above his tomb famously addresses us, Reader, if you seek his monument, Look around you. Written by Lord Nelson. And uh, Primo will give you a, uh, a history lesson here. Horatio Visc Nelson is buried underneath here. So tell us about Mr. Nelson. Uh, he is an important, important guy. Very, how important? Very important. Yeah? Yeah. On a scale of 1 to 20? 20. 25. Wow, he must be go. very important. <laughs> That's it? Yeah, I don't know anything. No, no history? I don't know anything. <laughs> no. I mean, Najir, you, Najir you, tell us about Nelson. Give us more history lesson than he does. Uh, Nelson, he was uh, the dark guy, right? From Africa? <laughs> <laughs> She's thinking Nelson Mandela. Yeah. <laughs> Well, you didn't say their last name, so... 
<laughs> that is well, we're going to get a history lesson of Nelson Mandela from Nigeria. Go ahead, Nelson. Tell us about no, Nelson Mandela. No, we, we're not in Africa. We are not the Oh, man. Oh. Lord Nelson was killed in the Battle of Trafalgar in 1805 and his coffin was made from the timber of a French ship he defeated in battle. The black marble sarcophagus that adorned his tomb was originally made from Cardinal Wolseley, Lord Chancellor during the reign of Henry VIII, until Wolseley fell from favor. May the great God whom I worship grant to my country for the benefit of Europe in general a great and glorious victory, and may no misconduct in any UN tarnish it. And may humanity after victory be the predominant feature in the British fleet. For myself, individually, I commit my life to him that made me. And may his blessing alight on my endeavors for serving my country faithfully. To him, I resign myself and just cause which is entrusted to me to defend. Amen, amen, amen. Wellington rests in an imposing casket made of Cornish granite. Although a national hero, he was known as the Iron Duke and, as a result of his tireless campaigning, had a colorful list of namesakes, Wellington Boots, the Dish Beef Wellington, and even a brand of cigars. The banners hanging around Wellington's tomb were made for his funeral procession. goodness my friends this video has come to an end i hope this experience has brought much joy and laughter to the heart and soul thank you so much for watching if you enjoyed this video please give it a thumbs up and hit that subscribe button don't forget to turn on notifications so you never miss an update from us and if you want to stay connected be sure to follow us on all social media platforms your support means the world to us hey what positions do ghosts play on the soccer field Goalkeeper. All right, I did good. Okay, ding, ding, ding. Thank you. Come again. We are leaving the Saint Paul's Cathedral with the three. With the three smoking hands. The there were three seagulls here. The three, the three amigos. No, three stooges. The three stooges. No, the three. Uh, musketeers. Three musketeers. You need to rest a little bit here. Huh? A little bit rest for this. Yes. <laughs> <laughs>